I like this platform. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's um, based off of uh, uh, Jitsi, which is like an open source video sharing yeah. platform. Yeah, I've used it a couple of times. Um, cool. Maybe it should be a bit more popular. Anyway, um, cool. Uh, this is meant to be a short chat. It's like more like a, a in some giving some context, and then I'd love to hear other people's conversations. So thanks very much um, to Jim for for inviting me. Uh, we've uh, chatted a couple of times now, and uh, it's always it's always cool to see community live on in the in the age of COVID. <laughs> um, so this is a this is a, all about technical community builders, and uh, I think people obviously here as part of a community. Uh, but why specifically people are investing in building community, and um, what I've been hearing about this. So uh, quick thoughts, I guess. Uh, this this really originated because I had I have quite a few conversations with different startups, uh, sometimes looking for funding, sometimes looking for DevRel advice and stuff like that. Um, and they, they always end the conversations with, by the way, we're really looking to ramp up our community effort. If you can think of anyone who can help us build a developer community, can you send them my way? So they're, they're hiring for this role, which is kind of unnamed to them. They, they notice that they, they're not saying community manager. I think because that title has some sort of, um, uh, some sort of, uh, yeah, uh, connotation, I guess. I I, I don't know. They they're trying to distinguish it uh, as someone who is uh, more of a developer uh, first. Um, so uh, <laughs> that's my that's my little meme. That that anytime people say the c word, people get very excited now. Um, a little bit for of context for about me for those people who um, may not uh, may be new to me. Um, I used to be in finance, and I changed careers to tech at age thirty, um, and definitely that was only possible because of tech community, like free code camp, coding blocks. And also I went through a bootcamp, which is a paid community. Uh, since then I graduated and joined Two Sigma Netlify, where I joined the Jamstack community uh, and got to know Jim a little bit, um, AWS. And I just joined Temporo as head of developer experience. Um, I've also helped to run uh, developer communities. So I helped to moderate r slash React.js uh, up to 200,000 members. And then I stepped down. Um, and I started Svelte Society from scratch. And now it's about uh, 10,000 members. Um, and also, we uh, I, I run a private community called Learning Public uh, for people who read my book and want to discuss uh, career stuff. OK, so those are my credentials for community. Uh, I also have a GitHub uh, profile I like to show off. Um, and uh, so, so let's talk a little bit about why community is important. Uh, community is essentially a moat. Um, developers have always had self-organized community, like sort of decentralized and informal, like IRC and VBSs. Uh, but now companies have actually formed where the community is basically the entire moat. Like GitHub is social Git, and anyone could build that. Uh, but they cannot build the 56 million developers that visit GitHub every day. Um, Stack Overflow, anyone can build a question and answer site, but they cannot build the 11 million uh, visitors every day to Stack Overflow questions. Um, and Hacker News, uh, 5 million a day, or 6 million, actually, uh, according to their most updated numbers. Uh, but these are very, very strong uh, communities. And, that, and it's almost more important that the humans stick around than uh, the product. Um, obviously, the product uh, you know, is, is what people come for, but they stay for the network. Um, this is increasingly being recognized. So, you know, we see articles in Harvard Business Review that community becomes your competitive advantage. You know that this is crossing over into the mainstream, and uh, companies are really taking um, and, uh, taking a closer look at it. Um, the problem I have with it is because I've been a part of these these tech companies where uh, they have reasonably strong communities of their own. Um, it's very distributed, like whose job is community? Like, is it a community manager? Uh, look at what they actually do. They, they mostly groom forums, and they are mostly responsible for social media. But uh, then what about outreach to other communities? That's that's typically the job of developer advocates. Uh, what about customer success? What about the people, the community of people who pay you money uh, to use your product? Uh, community managers often uh, hand that off to customer success or support or documentation or solutions engineering. Uh, and marketing, that's also an event-based community of webinars, conferences, and mailing lists. Um, so basically, the, the thesis here that I have is community is part of products that is under-resourced compared to products. Um, and so there's a question of like, what do we call this, right? Because like, there's all these titles. None of them kind of fit, because we want a, a new person in charge of community uh, that doesn't really that kind of, kind of cuts across all these disciplines. Um, so community developer, community Tumblr, Tumblr is a new word that I that I found recently. Basically, someone who starts conversations rather than leads it. 
uh, and then our, our technical community builder is where I, where I landed on, uh, which has it's it's got this closest parallel to TPM, technical product manager, that uh, is a formal role at uh, Amazon and uh, Microsoft. So the question is like, why must they be technical? You know, um, and my assertion is yes because I think that uh, developers understand when they're talking to someone who is not technical, and the the depth of the conversation can only go so far. Um, and the, the the some sometimes the stuff that really matters uh, that they that really want to engage on is technical in nature, and and the person talking to them needs to be technical. Uh, and then why why the why must the title be different? Uh, it's essentially a rebrand of a existing discipline. Like if you just call it community managers, people kind of don't necessarily get ex excited about it. Um, so it's very similar to a once in a lifetime status upgrade that sysadmins had uh, going into DevOps. It's not of course one-to-one, -one, uh, but obviously uh, when, you, when, you when you have a movement, people want to call themselves and identify as different things. Okay, so uh, who's doing good thinking about, about this? Um, I, I really like this model of the community led model by Comsor, uh, where basically, where community used to be at the fringe, right? They, they used to be like sort of the bottom of the totem pole, like uh, secondary to whatever uh, company is build, building. Um, now you sort of move it into the center and you sort of derive your sales inputs and your products inputs and marketing inputs from uh, a really good understanding of your existing community. Um, why people, are, why companies are investing in it? Uh, essentially, uh, there's this idea that traditional marketing and support uh, isn't cutting it for, for developers. Um, there's the traditional idea of like, this is what a funnel marketing funnel looks like, top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel. Um, but it's a very transactional focused idea. Like you start at the top and you make your way down or you fall out. Um, uh, marketing is kayfabe, so the, <laughs> we pretend that this works for developer marketing, uh, but this is this is typically more for e-commerce marketing, where the conversion cycles are like, you know, can be on, on the order of magnitude of hours and days. Whereas it, with developers, sometimes I will hear about technology and I'll not do it, I'll not even touch it for a year just to see if it sticks around, and show me a compensation or evaluation cycle that uh, evaluates things anything more than three months out. Um, so marketing, when, when it when it works on very long cycles, um, it tends to be a mismatch between the transactional nature of marketing and the relationship uh, nature of community. Um, and also, it doesn't help. It doesn't really help to answer what happens after you convert, right? Uh, you tend to leave people there and hand it off, and that can be a very uh, distracting experience. Um, so. So the solution is really to that uh, encourage people to go from a mostly transactional finite game to a relationship-based infinite game. Um, and <laughs> this is my poor attempt at trying to illustrate like what a developer journey looks like. Um, really <laughs> uh, tracking even even being responsible for a developer even before they know that you exist or they know that they have a problem, and then funneling people in, uh, letting them go through the traditional marketing sales funnel, but then continuing to engage with them uh, even after they become a paid customer, uh, especially after they churn as well. The original iteration of this chart had a lot more detail, but I had to cut it because it was too complex. Okay. Um, finally, I want to show uh, a orbit model, which is uh, another really good measure of thinking by the orbit.love folks. Um, I was on their podcast recently as well, if you want to check that out. Uh, they have a really good thinking around like uh, rethinking the funnel and thinking more in terms of like the, the rings of people, concentric rings of people that are surrounding your projects or your company um, and moving them in and increasing their reach. Uh, essentially, that's the, that's the rough goal of the orbit model and, and helping you quantify this, these numbers. Uh, ultimately, the goal for us is that uh, there's a strong, <laughs> there's a strong um, distinction between the number of people that uh, helped to build the community, who are the early adopters, and the people, number of people who choose technologies based on community. They, they will say things like, oh, I like this technology because the ecosystem is really strong. Well, who made those ecosystems in the first place? It's the people who are early adopters. So really, uh, what we're trying to do is, is to help companies cross the chasm from there. Um, and the final reason on why um, is, is really that community scales very well, right? Uh, typically, we'll have like a marketing professional or like a developer relations person uh, engaging in individuals and uh, uh, community like one by one. Um, and then Macav's law is, is a much higher order of magnitude scaling um, where each individual member of the community actually adds value to everyone else. Um, and, that's, and that's a really awesome uh, way to uh, think about how you scale community as well. I have a lot of other uh, aspects as well. If, if for example, your one of your key problems is hiring, um, hiring from your existing community is way easier than hiring from a general software engineer pool uh, who's never heard of you and doesn't care about their company mission.
Um, there's a lot more. There's a lot more detail here. Uh, it, uh, I'll link to the blog post at the end, um, and I'll put this in the chat. But that's essentially the context I wanted to set, and, and this is meant to be a short introductory discussion. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much, John. That was great. Awesome. Uh, I want to open up the floor to um, some questions. Does anyone have any questions for Sean? Let's see. Do I do I paste it here? Okay. I'll paste, I'll paste it the link to the post in the chat. Uh, I can paste the slides as well. Cool. Um, essentially, that's my thinking. Like it's it's a really it's really cool area of investment and something that I have accidentally been preparing for for the past few years without even knowing that this was a thing. Yeah, I, actually, I remember when I first reached out to you, I was I saw you tweeting some stuff, and then you you pointed me to a blog post you had made. Um, so it's cool to see it come all the way to a presentation. Uh, I, I had a few questions for you, Sean. Um, maybe I'll kick it off. So um, one of my questions is, so this is a cool like new space, and I'm wondering like, so I know you've you've been someone that's been in roles that have been similar to this in, in the past, um, and and you're someone who's you know who's influential in the tech space. You have a, a very popular blog, and you're you're in a lot of spheres. Um, online organizing things. So it makes sense that you would be a good person to fit in this. Does, does somebody need to have some kind of like influencer status to, to be good in this role or how would someone new break into something like this? Oh, oh, that's interesting. Um, I don't know about breaking in uh, because like this is more, uh, this is an undefined role, right? This is just something that people want to, want to define better and it's in the process of forming. Um, and we're all, feeling at this ourselves. So I, uh, you know, you, you referenced the fact that I was a developer advocate. So when we talk about where I was in this in the stack, I, I was here, right? I wasn't responsible for uh, grooming forums or like uh, customer support or, or marketing. Um, but we all handle, you know, bits of this this role. And and the task is to, to really more formally recognize like this title, to move it uh, from the periphery to the, to the core. Um, and I think anyone with the vision um, to, to do this, um, can should should be trying because it's something that's uh, extremely in demand right now, um, just by the sheer number of companies that are asking me about it. So like I put up this GitHub post, uh, sorry I put up this blog post, and then like people were like, oh yeah, we're we're also hiring, and then I just started a list of people, and here are all the companies that are hiring for this. So if you want to get in touch, uh, just get in touch with all these uh, CEOs and VP of Eng and all these people that that are trying to hire for this role, um, and it's pretty much if there's a guidebook. Um, then, then it would be a much more mature field than it is right now. Like the whole point of this talk is that this is a new thing that we're all trying to figure out, and we don't really know how to do it well yet. So it's up to you to <laughs> to, <laughs> to get into it with us. Um, do you need to do you need to be an influencer? Uh, straight answer is no, uh, but also honest answer is that it will be easier if you if you do. Um, the reason it's the reason it's a no is because you're not exactly responsible for pulling people into your community. Uh, that's what an influencer can do for you. Uh, whereas a technical community builder, you know, you're you're helping to engage and connect other people within the existing community, understand their needs, and feed it back into the company uh, products and sales and marketing. Um, so uh, you can do a lot just just as as someone with no profile, but uh, with a lot of dedication to serving the company's community. Awesome. No, it's great. Um... And, and then I guess kind of a follow-up question. So it's, that's cool that you, you've put together a list of all these companies looking for this type of role. Is there any advice that you give to someone who's maybe trying to uh, get a company who's not aware of this role uh, on board with the importance of, of how it could help the organization? Have you thought about that at all? Yeah, I mean, uh, I guess that's that's like that's like my my list of reasons of why this is a good reason to, uh, there are good reasons to invest in the, com in the community. Um, Ultimately, if a company believes and prioritizes in community, they will they will find their way towards this line of thinking with or without my help. Um, if they're not convinced about it and they're they're sort of product first, field of dreams people, you know, I build it, they'll come. Um, then good luck to them. Cool. Thanks. Do other folks I, have questions? I I had a question. I I, I um, Sean, thank you for. Uh, yeah. For, for the turn off my sharing because I, I can't see who's talking. Yep. Um, this is really informative and great. Um, you know, I thought your comparison to to sysadmin and DevOps is really interesting. Um, <laughs> you know, one of the things that one of the things that helped facilitate that transition from sysadmin to DevOps was the the creation of new tools and the adoption of kind of yep. like repeatable techniques. So I'm kind of wondering, you know, from your perspective. You know what are the new tools and techniques that 
that community technical community builders have available to them? Really good question. Um, I had a I had a thing at the at the end of the, the post about um, the the new set of tools that are coming out that are helping. Um, so of course this uh, I think Discord. I'm a big fan of Discord over Slack uh, because Discord is is much more amenable to free flowing and conversation. Um, but of course Slack is Slack is where a lot of people already are. So you should meet people where they are. Um, uh, Hopin and Bevy are, are sort of new newer conference tools. Uh, async. Uh, tools as well. Uh, Circle, Forum, and Hashnode are a really good community forums as well. And for example, at, at AWS, where, where I used to work, uh, we actually set up a dedicated Dev2 uh, organization for all of AWS, and we're engaging our community over at AW, uh, at Forum. Uh, sorry, well, at Dev2. Um, but Hashnode as well, Hashnode at Netlify, we, we also engage um, Hashnode uh, pretty aggressively. Um, for, met for metrics, there's uh, orbit.love, um, which is the the uh, the sort of concentric circle model that I that I showed you, uh, where they actually show you uh, how to quantify your community and to uh, reach out to them on an individual basis because they track you uh, on a person to person basis, like how are they engaging with your with your company and your open source projects. Um, there are other companies as well, Comsor and Weaver. These are earlier stage in the sense that they they don't have any public. Um, product to share, uh, but I've met with both founders uh, after this uh, blog post was released. So uh, there, there's some tools, you know, there, I don't think they, I think they're all tackling parts of the problem. Um, and we, in, we, we have to figure out like what people really need to, to help them do their jobs. Um, we'll see. <laughs> but there's no, there's no infra as code equivalent. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, it would be it would be cool to have like community as code, but I, I don't know what that means. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> whoa, that's fascinating. That's its own blog post right there. No, no. I, I'm not, <laughs> go ahead and go ahead and write it. I'm not. I'm not gonna get into that one. <laughs> well, uh, just a follow up question to that. But what do you think? Um, you you mentioned Orbit and 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 some and th and measuring the community. You know, what do you think are um, what do you kind of think are the most important uh, metrics to deliver on for for, for a community? you know, a technical community builder, you know, are you, are you seeing people have to deliver on certain metrics like growth of a community or engagement in a community? Like what do you, what do you see is it being important there? Yeah. Um, I straight answer is I'm still figuring this out. Uh, even for the company I work at, um, I have an informal one I can give you. So, uh, so the straight, you know, a plain answer is, uh, you know, it's very easy to track number of registered people, a uh, number of monthly active, uh, members, um, but I really want to encourage something more substantive, uh, where it encourages quality of conversation. Um, so I like this idea. I, I and as a community manager myself, I, I I really like seeing people talking to each other uh, without my my helping them or without my uh, initiation, because then then that 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 means I have sparked off a self-sustaining community that, that that's got some uh, internal momentum of its own. Um, so I don't know how you quantify that. Uh, I'm sure there, there's some tools to, to do that, like, you know, not initiated by employee or whatever. Um, but uh, that, but that, that'd, be, that'd be really cool. And another thing I, I really like is uh, the amount of people who stick around where their tenure in the communities is longer than their existing job. So they stay with your company or your tool longer than wherever they work. So they're more loyal to your tool. Uh, than their current employer, which is fantastic. To me, that's a re very good metric. But good luck, again, applying that on a less than one year basis, right? So like trying to professionalize this in industry is going to be hard because uh, everyone wants to measure in quarter by quarter basis. And I'm sorry, humans don't work like that. Thank, thank you for that. That was, <laughs> that, was, that, that was a very insightful. Um, I think I think there's also a natural num uh, limit. So I've been doing some research into Dunbar's number. So for everyone who doesn't know, uh, it's like a, some social studies research on like what's the natural limit of real connections that people can su sustain. Um, and it seems to be roughly between uh, 250 to 350, depending on your age. Um, but there's also concentric circles around this, right? You only really have like uh, one to two super close people like your parents when you're growing up or your life partner when you're uh when you're grown up uh and then and then you know it broadens out a little bit to like five people which are like your closest friends and then there's like you know there's bigger bigger and bigger circles like 15 50 uh and 150 and so on and so forth um so i think trying to jam more and more people into your community and making it super noisy 
can be a little bit of a turnoff. Um, so I, I want people to think about like ways to, I guess, federate the community. Um, so one of the things that uh, so I had a really good conversation with someone who's more religious than I am, um, which is we made this comparison about churches uh, and church planting and how uh, essentially like, you know, th there is a natural limit to how big a church can get. I mean, there are some mega churches, but let's, let's not talk about those. But, uh, <laughs> uh, and, and sometimes people split off and they, they form a new community and, it, and it, there's sort of this uh, self uh, replicating aspect of, of it. That's so it's pretty cool because people feel like they're part of a close knit community, but they also feel like they're part of a broader movement. Um, and I think that's some, that's a, a nice human centric way that's proven over time to actually scale human connection. I, I like that. That's really interesting. Do you, do you think that, that, that it's sort of like micro communities within, within the larger community, you know, people that are into this particular niche aspect of, of a product or, or a community and, and trying to foster that growth? Is that, is that sort of how you, you map that, that church model? Um, yeah, I mean, for, so for churches, it's geographical, right? Um, but sometimes for online and business-wise, you can, you can cut it in different ways. Um, so yeah, special interest groups, essentially, uh, within, within a broader overall identity. Uh, that seems like a, a good model. Yeah, I think uh, so. The 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 interview that I covered on uh, so I have a, I have my own mixtape where I where I like take audio clips uh, of uh, the podcast that I listen to. So uh, you can look at you can go look up the 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 one on Dunbar's number where where he actually published his research on this stuff. I pasted it in the chat. Uh, but essentially, it was this uh, it's this idea that uh, people if you want to scale communities beyond in, into the thousands, uh, people really connect on like very very narrow slices like. We, hey, we all like this piece of music. Uh, hey, we all like this this uh, football team, or whatever. Um, and then, but the, when you really get down to it, obviously people have really strong differences even within the community. Uh, so it can be healthy to, I guess, uh, split people off into into their own subgroups. Uh, hello, Sean. Hi. Hey. Hi. Uh, thank you for your presentation because it's very interesting. I'm just a developer, so I have the point of view of a developer. Mm. Uh, here we have uh, you as a former, maybe a developer, and we have people like Jim and uh, people from right, uh, who are from the business side. Uh, are you listening here? Yeah, your audio is a bit your audio is a bit muffled. I, I'm not sure what happened. Ah, okay. okay. So, sorry. Better, Try to be better. closer to the computer. Um, and uh, do you think that uh, one day when the marketing people will be aware of uh, the 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 fact that we need um, businesses need to grow and uh, community, do you think that one day will be difficult to, tell, to make the difference to tell the difference between a real developer advocate and maybe a lobbyist. And what's the what's the second one? A lobbyist. 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 A lobbyist. Yeah. yeah, because you know sometimes when I listen to some people presenting the party and uh, they 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 present they present the, the thing very uh, all the problems. Uh, you Sorry, your, your audio your audio keeps cutting out. I I can't. Understand. Uh, maybe it's inter it's the internet uh, connection because I'm yeah. from Europe. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, your your uh, your connection is showing like a yellow. Bar. Yeah, maybe maybe maybe. I, okay, so uh, I heard a little bit. I could. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Um, uh, sorry, Tristan. Let me, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I heard what you were saying. I think uh, Tristan's worried about. Um, not being able to differentiate between true developers who care about technology and lobbyists who are making, you know, making a very streamlined presentation that makes a product look good, but might nece not necessarily be as strong as they're advocating because they're more marketing oriented than than technical oriented. Is that did I get that right, Tristan? Or am I? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I don't know. So, so, so we're we're moving away from community now, and now we're just talking about developer relations versus marketing. Um, and I will, I will just honestly tell you that people have very uh, 
<laughs> very have a very hard time biting the hand that feeds them, right? Like if, if my salary comes from uh, <laughs> comes from some company, um, then uh, I'm incentivized to uh, pick out the nicer points about the company and, and not be so public about uh, the stuff that isn't, isn't so great. Um, how much of that is lobbying and how much of that is professional DevRel, uh, where you're you're advocating for the app developer rather than the company? Uh, is honestly on an individual basis. Like you, you have to you have to keep your wits about you and judge for yourself. Is this person full of BS, uh, or are they genuinely in, uh, preaching technology that they love and uh, they have evaluated all the options and they really really like seriously? Even if they were not paid, they're endorsing this thing. Uh, that's what that's what that's what a lot of them will say. But uh, you have to figure out whether that's the truth for yourself. Um, so yeah, it's a difficult thing. Um, I, I got I got confused by your usage of the word lobbyist because to me lobbyist is a very specific term for governments, right? Like you're, you're lobbying a government to, to change a policy or law in your favor, uh, and devrefer kids don't do that. I, I think that would come back to like um, kind, of, kind of like what we we're talking about with the question I, I had earlier. Someone who's been around in the tech with, with like for a long time who's been blogging and doing that, you, you probably build up a, a trust relationship with those type of people. Like I might yeah. trust someone that I've, if I've used someone's resources over time, I've kind of like, even if I haven't met them, I might build up some level of trust that what they're talking about is believable. And I, I think people generally, if they have a good track record, then uh, I, it, I internally elevate their opinions a little bit more. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, as if you're, if you know what you're doing as a developer advocate, then you know that your credibility is your, number one currency like that's the uh your you have maximum skin in the game it's your face your name on the stuff that you put out there and if you put out something that you don't believe in then people won't trust you forever um but a lot of people uh uh have more relaxed uh, morals about what they what they do with that with that with them um, so i can't say that that's true for everybody Um, cool. All right. Well, <laughs> if you, if you, oh, uh, I, I guess I can put in my uh, my email. Um, if anyone else wants to connect, uh, off the record or whatever, uh, I'm happy to chat via email uh, about this stuff. I just think it's a hey, fascinating Sean. Trend. Oh, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just had another question on my end. Are you um also on LinkedIn or? I'm not on LinkedIn. Okay. Just was curious. Yeah, I'm just a, I'm just on Twitter and I got my own site. Uh, try to try to keep in touch with people via email. I think uh, I, I try not to support LinkedIn as much as possible, just because I don't like the engagement model that they have. Um, getting me to pay to look at who looked at my profile is just like a really crappy high school juvenile behavior. But whatever. Like you, you guys understand you're doing crud, so that a multi-billion-dollar organization can profit off of selling your data. Like that's the, the cleanest. Like we will sell your data, and you're like, yeah, cool. <laughs> gotta, we gotta, we gotta stay woke. They've, uh, they, they've got us. With, they've, they've got us with that one. There's, there's nothing yeah. woke about it. So it's, it's just a transaction where you're not getting any benefit, and everyone else is. So I, I mean, I, I don't know. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Sean. That was that was a great presentation, and I, I feel like the discussion was really good. Um, yeah. 